All right, so we are continuing in chapter two. We're in 2.1 now looking at slope and rate of change under linear equations and their functions. All right, so what is slope? Well, the slope of a non-vertical line is the ratio of the vertical change, which we also call the rise, to the horizontal change, which we call the run. Now, the slope of a line is usually represented by the variable m. Now, the slope as a ratio can be represented as delta y over delta x. That, if you have taken science, literally means the change in y over the change in x. And so, as a visual ratio, we see rise over run. There's a different ways that you can remember uh, what the slope is. Now, how it works is the slope of any non-vertical line, make sure it's non-vertical, that passes through two points, and we have the two points as x1 and y2, and then the other coordinate point x2 and y2, well, the slope is going to be as follows. If I had a point here on the line, I don't know if, if you saw it pop up, uh, that red point on the blue line, if I take it back and bring it back up, you should see it. And that point will represent our first coordinate point we see here in our little definition, x1 and y1, right? Where those two meet is our coordinate point. And if I have a second point to represent x2 and y2, well, that point could be over here. And it, this would be x2 and y2, just meaning that the value of the x and the y is a bit greater. To find the slope of that on the graph, well, what that basically is, is our rise over our run. So it's just simply the distance between the two y values over, as in division, the two, the distance between the two x values, or a rise over run, our change in the y values over the change in the x values. And so to find the difference between y2 and y1, well, we would just subtract. And to find the difference between x2 and x1, we would subtract. Same way if we had 8 and 3 uh, for our values, so while the difference between 8 and 3 is 5, and that's how you're able to find it. And so we're basically taking the change in the y, which is x2, y2 take away y1, over the change in the x, x2 take away x1. And remember, our previous definition said it's the ratio. And that's literally what our slope is. And you see it a lot with steps or staircases. If you look at a stairwell and you're like, well, that's a really steep stairwell, you're actually talking about the steps. And each step represents a rise over the run. The ratio between that represents the slanted non-vertical line. All right, let's go ahead and just try this using the same formula and the concept of counting the slope. So we have find the slope of the line that passes through the points, negative 2, 3, and 4, 5. And so what we're going to do is just take the time out to use our equations there uh, to help us out. So we have y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. Now let's go ahead and just write that in there. If I was just to use the visual representation of rise of a run, I'm just trying to see how would I get from here using the vertical change to here using the hor uh, horizontal change as well. And so if you see if I count up vertically from this point that's 1, 2. So my rise would be 2. And so my run would be to go in the opposite direction, going th I mean to the right. And that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so it would be 2 over 6 which will reduce as a fraction to one-third. All right, so that's just by looking at it and counting. Let's go ahead and do that now using the formula that we have derived from our understanding of what slope is. So we first just need our two points. Uh, we, they're already given to us. Negative two, negative, th negative two, positive three is here. And positive four, positive five is there. So we're going to take the four, five as our uh, second one. So this would be x2 and y2 is also sometimes it's good to uh, label them in advance that way you don't get mixed up all right so our slope is going to be y2 and I'm not going to make it red and purple uh, so we have y2 would be 5 and I put one, 2 there that's a 1 and our y1 would be 3 so 5 subtract 3 all divided by our x2 is 4 and our x1 is negative 2 but remember because we're subtracting two negatives make a positive. So that's going to turn to 5 subtract 3, which is 2, and 4 plus 2, which is 6. The same thing you see above, and when it reduces, we get a third. 
And so now we have a technique that whether we're giving a graph to represent the equation or function, or if we're giving it uh, without a graph, we can still find out what the slope of that line is. All right, now the thing is, the beauty of this, it doesn't matter where the point on the line is, as long as you're in the same location. Meaning, if you see here, this is touching the corner points of the grids, uh, where this grid meets with that one, right? Same with here, where this grid meets here. And so, as long as you can find another point like that on this graph, what you could do is still count the slope from any of those points. So if I was to put another point on the line, you see it meets at one of the grid lines. I can use that point to determine the slope. So you see here, I'm going to change the color so it stands out a little bit more. If I count from here to here, I'll do my rise as up one. So my slope would be, my rise would be one. And then I go over one, two, three. And so I can still find the exact same slope no matter where I am on this graph. Right, I could have used the other two points as well if I also erased the, those two there. And if I change the color to red and I did the middle and this one here, you still see the same thing. But actually, I'm going to count the opposite direction just to show you. If I count down, right, if I count down one, going down would actually be negative one. And now instead of going to the right, I'm going to the left, which will also be negative, and that will be one, two, three. And so that would be negative three. But a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And so even if I count the opposite direction, I still get the same slope. And so as long as you remember rise over run, which one goes from the top, uh, then this should be easy as pie. All right, the other thing we want to know is the types of slope. Uh, here we have just some, we have four different Cartesian planes here. And what you see on the bottom, positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, and undefined slope. Now remember, when we count, we count from left to right. One, two, three, four. Which means as we increase, we're moving to the right. And that's how you want to look at positive slope. Since slope is the same thing as the gradient or the steepness of a line, then if you imagine yourself walking on this Cartesian plane, a positive slope means you must be going uphill. And so any type of graph that looks like it's going uphill is going to represent a positive slope. In terms of a negative slope, if you're going from left to right, you want your graph to look like it's going downhill from left to right. A zero slope obviously would mean there's no slope at all. It's like a flat line. And undefined slope, well, you'll see what that means in a moment. But it goes back to our definition. Slope has to be on a non-vertical line. So you could possibly guess from the definition that that would be a vertical line. All right, let's go ahead and see what that would look like. Uh, here's the positive slope. So imagine him walking from left to right. He would go up if this was a girl here and she was walking from left to right. She would go down or negative slope. And this other one, let's just say it's uh, someone else. And if they're walking, it would be on a zero slope and it would be flat. There's no slope. There's no gradient. There's no steepness. It's flat. And we call that a zero slope. And then, last of all, undefined slope. In real life, there's no person that can walk straight up a vertical wall. And so that's undefined. And we're going to look more into these uh, real soon of how these work when we're dealing with problem solving and other types of questions like that. All right, so let me just erase all the ink real fast. All right, so let's go ahead and see what that will look like in a more realistic scenario where we're actually finding the points on a line. Let's determine if the slope of the lines are positive, negative, zero, or undefined without graphing the line. So for A, we have the point negative 3, 1, and 5, 3. And we're going to go ahead and determine this without a graph. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So we have our, our equation for finding a slope, and that's y2 subtract y1 over x2 subtract x1. And label it can help so you don't mix it up. x1 is there, y1, x2, y2. And if you substitute right in there, y2 is 3, subtract 1 over x2 is 5, subtract negative 3. And 3 subtract 1 is simply 2. The two negatives there make a positive, so 5 plus 3 is 8. And that can reduce down to a quarter. And that would be the slope of uh, a line that passes through those two points. I won't write out the equation here as we have it there on the part A, but for one, if you label them, 
is x1, x2, y1, y2. And so we have 5 subtract negative 2, all divided by 1 subtract 1. Now, oh, we didn't we forgot to label it. Uh, for the first one, because this is a positive value, this would be a positive slope. So if you were to graph it, it would go from left to right going up. So this one's positive. I'll just put a capital P there with a box. Whereas this one, we have 5 plus 3, right? 5 plus 2, sorry. 5 plus 2 is 7. But 1 subtract 1, well, that's going to give us 0. And 7 over 0, well, that's going to be undefined. You cannot divide 7 by 0. And so this one is undefined. I'm just going to put a capital U there. Uh, so undefined, this would be a vertical line. If you were to graph it, a line would be vertical, whereas this one is diagonal. right? So a vertical line is an undefined slope. It means you have 0 on the bottom of the denominator. And this actually is pretty similar to what we did in functions when we were looking at uh, the vertical line test. Uh, let's look at part C. Uh, we have two other scenarios left, and let's see what it yields, negative or zero. So we have M is equal to, uh, remember these are Y1 and Y2. So we have 2 subtract negative 2 over our X2. This should be 2 over X1. So 1 subtract 4. Okay, on the top we have 2 plus 2. And 2 plus 2 is going to give us... 4. And 1 subtract 4 is going to give us negative 3. And that's going to give us a negative slope. And remember, a negative slope, if you were to graph that, would go downwards. All right? Uh, I don't have one here with 0, but 0 would be when you have two values that are the same in the y value and they're not negative. And oh, this one, this one actually is 0. Right? I forgot that negative. Negative 2 minus negative 2. When I was saying the definition of it, it made me realize I didn't do it right. Negative uh, 2, this is going to become a plus, and it actually will turn it into a 0. So, good thing I went back over the very definition of it. All right, so that actually means a 0 over negative 3. Now, 0 is on the top. That means our answer is 0. So, we actually have a 0 slope, and that means if we were to graph this, it would look something like this. This is not the accurate line. It's just an example. All of those were examples that I sketched, but that's what it would look like. It would be a slope of 0. No gradient, no steepness to it, just a flat line. Now, if you would have got a negative, it would have went down from left to right. All right, so that's how we do this one. Now, here we can determine sometimes if a line is steeper than another one based off of the absolute value. Uh, so remember, absolute value would be like the absolute value of 3 is 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. So based off of the absolute value, uh, we can tell whether the negative or positive slope will be steeper than the other. If the value is larger than the other value, then that's the one that has the steeper slope. So just to kind of give a visual, if this represented the absolute value of 10, right, and this one here, I drew the exact same one, uh, and if this one here represented, just going to redraw it a different color, and this one here represented, let's say, 2, then absolute value of 2, really it's just 2 because it's already a positive value. But anyhow, we have 10 and 2. 10 would be steeper than 2. And so what we're going to do is find that without actually graphing them. We're just going to use our uh, understanding of the slope. All right, so which line has the steeper slope, A or B? So let's go ahead and find the slope of A. Remember, M, let me get my pen on, M is equal to Y2, which is 2, subtract 4, over X2, which is 1, subtract negative 3. 2 subtract 4 is going to give us negative 2. These two negatives is going to give us a positive. And so we have equals 2. Negative 2 fourths is the same as negative half. Now just remember, we're thinking of half in terms of steepness. Uh, we can see this is a negative slope. We know that it will look something like that. But how steep would it be? Because it's the absolute value of half, then it's actually not going to be as steep as I drew there. It's actually going to be a little bit wider. And we'll do some little examples there. Uh, let's do a pen here. It would look possibly more like that, right? Not as steep. 
Well, let's see if this one is going to be less than that in terms of an absolute value. Uh, change the color to blue. All right, so we have m is equal to y2, which is 1. Subtract y1, which is 3, over x2, which is negative 4. Subtract x1, which is 2. 1 subtract 3 is negative 2. Negative 4 subtract 2 is going to give us negative 6. And that's two negatives together. It's going to give us a positive slope of one third. Now, the absolute value of one third is actually smaller than the absolute value of a half, which means that the half is going to be slightly steeper. Even though it's going downhill, it's going to be a steep downhill slope. Whereas this one is going uphill, but is going uphill at not so much a steep slope. Right? And if you're not sure which one's bigger, a half is like 50%, and a third is like 33.3333 continuous percent. All right, so now let's just come out of here for a moment. We're going to keep that, and we're going to transition to this. Here's an example of how the steepness of a graph will look based off the absolute value. So my blue line is represented by the blue dots here. So if you look at this one, I don't have an annotation on my screen. Uh, but the one that I move here, so you see as that value increases, you see where the M above says 1.32 and it's going down. As it goes down in value, notice the steepness of the graph also gets lower until finally you hit zero. And remember, zero has no slope. It's just a straight line. And so as I increase that value, it gets steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steep, very steep, right? Uh, a car could not drive up that. But if you look at the negative, the red one, which is a negative slope, um, this one, although it's negative, it could have a steeper slope than the blue one, right? So even though the blue is positive, that red one has a steeper slope based off of the absolute value of its slope. And so what you'll see is that as that value, uh, I messed that up a bit, but what you'll see is as that value uh, decreases, that, I have to just do one more undo there, there we go. As you see, as it increases in value, so that's negative 3.49, and that's negative 0 0.87. And as those values get smaller, less steep. As the values, the absolute values get larger, it gets steeper. So just keep that in mind as we move forward.